Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm working on kind of a neat book, which is uh, really being healthy uh, during residency and uh, kind of getting your health back, but not only in the context of, of weight loss and, and uh, dieting, but also uh, kind of organizing everything, and, and uh, I hope to have that out soon. Uh, but for now, I know some of you are preparing for the NAPLEX and the MPJE, and I just wanted to kind of take you back. I know that some of you, it says that 80% of schools help their students uh, with some kind of NAPLEX prep, but uh, what I think is really missed is uh, making sure that those trips into work and back from work are, are efficient. And uh, that's why I wrote Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach, which is really just a way to memorize the top 300 drugs, which is really the foundation of pharmacotherapeutics and, and once you get to those things. Now, again, the NAPLEX has changed. Uh, it used to be uh, a four-hour test that was adaptive. Uh, now it's a six-hour test uh, that it has static questions. And uh, although the new data is not out for the 2021 uh, cohort, uh, it looks like there should have been a pass rate around 85%, which is about four points lower. So don't quote me on that. Uh, again, I just got it from a, a couple of uh, pharmacy school websites. They put up uh, the pass rates and compared it to the average. Now, the rest of us don't have that data, uh, but every school is given that data uh, after their students have taken it uh, for that kind of first six-month period. I think it's uh, through October. So uh, through October of 2021 is is what I think was an 85% pass rate, which would be quite a bit lower uh, than, than we have right now. So uh, again... Uh, right now, the, the new date is not out, even though it is uh, April. Usually that comes out in the beginning of March, uh, but it didn't this year. So as a foundation for uh, doing this, uh, I would recommend this pharmacology book because it's about seven hours, so you can listen to it in a weekend if you really wanted to. Uh, but I intentionally made it so that you could listen on the way, on the way back, and then after about five days, you'd be mostly done with the book. And uh, it goes over... Uh, not only those uh, top 300 drugs and gives you the mnemonics to memorize them and uh, make sure you really have a good understanding of stems, understanding that just because it says prezole, uh, which would be a proton pump inhibitor, uh, don't forget about something like brexpiprazole, uh, which is very different. Uh, and uh, so making sure that you understand where the stems are and where you can kind of go wrong. So uh, one of the ways that I've seen that, that students go wrong with that is ean, uh, where they say, oh, well, it's ean, it's an antihistamine. And, and that is the case with loratadine and cetirizine. However, morphine ends in ean, and so does fluoxetine. So you need to know the entire stem. And for something like Claritin, it's adadine. And then for a H2 blocker, it's tidine, T-I-D-I-N-E, versus A-T-A-D-I-N-E. So again, uh, we really want to make sure that you have those stems down foundationally. Uh, I know many of you are using your RX Prep books as a doorstop right now. Uh, and then uh, someone asked me, are the videos worth it? So I think when you have fear as something going on where I think it's almost $800 for the, the whole RX prep thing if you're doing the videos and everything, hopefully your school has something. And if they don't, you really want to kind of talk to them about that because it seems kind of silly that, you know, you spent 200 quarter of a million dollars and they can't throw 800 of those dollars back to each student uh, to make sure that they pass the NAPLEX and then uh, in some way the MPJE. Now, if you want something a little bit more, uh, usually with this audiobook, because this is mine, uh, it's going to say that there's actually a price on it. But uh, if you've never been on Audible before, uh, you can go and get these, and I'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, but you can get this for free. Uh, so if you've never been on Audible before, okay. All right, so if you want to go to residency.teachable.com, I do have a self-paced pharmacology course. So if pharmacology was something you kind of just limp through, uh, I give you a little bit of a different way to do it. And uh, it not only has you know the course itself with the videos, but it also has practice quizzes, which are mobile friendly. So for every slide, there is a question. 
And what it's meant to do is not just, okay, I watched the video, uh, but to make sure that you've got that. So again, uh, residency.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash mobile, uh, or just go to residency.teachable.com and look for the self-paced pharmacology course uh, with mobile videos and practice quizzes. If you really want to do something, uh, and this would be for someone that is not graduating in May, uh, we also have a course here at the Moyne Area Community College. Just put in pharmacology and DMACC. Uh, it's one of the most popular courses nationwide. So uh, we have two sections, but they tend to fill up quickly uh, as students get their scores in the end of the spring semester uh, and find out that they need to, to repeat pharmacology over the summer. So uh, again, the NAPLEX is something that I think uh, many students put some time to and they keep having this feeling that no my APPE is the most important I'm gonna do all I can in my APPE and that and that's true you should uh, be mindful of it but I assure you that uh, many many contracts in residency uh, require that you are licensed within the first 90 days uh, and obviously with that CPJE thing we had that was a real problem and although I know that I have heard the CPJE will be going to the MPJE, but I looked at the schedule and it looks like there are schedules for the CPJE through the entire year of 2022. So I don't think if that happens uh, that this would apply to you. So I don't have great uh, data on that. Uh, I'll obviously update you as I get more. So again, uh, just kind of a brief uh, thing here you can uh, check out the course uh, for yourself there's a, a preview link uh, there where you can kind of just check out the classroom lecture and just feel you know is that something uh, that would be worth it to you uh, as you're kind of moving towards your NAPLEX uh, as a foundation for studying for it the other big thing that I think you really want to do and this is something I do with my Appy students is I help them organize the pathophysiologic states in an order that they can memorize. So I use GM rinse, which is grandmother's rinse kids hair, except it's rinse the French R-I-N-C-E rather than R-I-N-S-E to remember, okay, I'm going to first focus on gastrointestinal. I'm then going to go to musculoskeletal, then respiratory, then immune, then neuropsych, cardio, and then endocrine. And then I've got an OTC videos in here as well. And the reason I do that is because when I have a patient case, and this is something that works really well in pharmacotherapy, if you take a minute or two to put all of the medications that a patient is on in the GM rinse order, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, respiratory, immune, neuropsych, and cardio, and endocrine, if you do it in that order, you are in a lot better shape to find especially things like drug duplications. So it's going to intentionally, on the NAPLEX, you're going to have these cases where everything is intentionally scrambled. But if you always have in your brain this order, then it makes it so much easier because they might hide something, like they might say, okay, well, we're going to have Zestril as one medication, okay, and then Ramipril as another. And what you want to do is, oh, hold on, let me make sure everything, I've got the generic names for all of them, so that you can put Lysinopril and then Ramipril, and you'll say, whoa, hey, wait a minute, we've got two prills. All right, we've got a, a duplication here. And it's just a very easy way to do it and a very easy way to get your, your mind around it. So when you are in, and this is more for practice, but if you are working as a CG, BCGP where you're in you know, geriatric pharmacotherapy or even psych, uh, it makes it so much easier if you've decided ahead of time what order you're going to put these medications in. And so this top 300 uh, drugs that I have uh, in the book and in the course, uh, these are really meant to give you a way to put everything in these compartments and by putting them in these compartments it makes it a lot better so questions tony the pharmacist at gmail.com i'll see you next time